Let's, let's jump into this thing, man. Uh, we got to start with Sunday Night Football. Uh, the GOAT, my main man, Tom Too Cool, uh, broke the all-time passing yards record. Uh, if I told you three years ago that Tom Brady would break the record in Foxborough, but he wouldn't play, he wouldn't be playing for the Patriots, you'd probably say I was crazy, right? I would ask you what you were smoking on. <laughs> yeah. Um I, I'm one of the people that did not believe he was going to actually leave until he did leave. So if you had told me that three years ago, I would have thought you were lying. Well, that is what happened. He did wind up leaving. This is his second year in Tampa Bay. And he did just happen to go back to Foxborough Stadium to break that all time uh, passing yards record, which was previously held by Drew Brees, who just retired this past season. Um, I mean, I, I honestly, bro. How does this that even work out that Tom Brady plays 20 years in New England, leaves New England, goes to Tampa Bay, and then still winds up breaking that passing yards record in Foxborough? How does that happen? Uh, I mean, obviously, a little bit of luck because he had to play well last year to at least put himself in position to be able to break it this year. So he needed to play well. He needed to uh, beat the odds. Uh, because most guys don't play well into their 40s. And then the second part of that was the schedule makers. You know, when they sat down, they knew there was going to be a matchup with Tampa and New England this year because those divisions played each other. So they knew that was coming. It was a matter of, can we line it up perfectly so that it could happen um, in Foxborough, which they did by having it week four. You look at their first three opponents, he was going to get some numbers. I mean, they played a Dallas defense that they look much better now, but Week one, we were expecting last year's Dallas defense, so he had some yards there. He played a Falcon defense that ain't really good, so he had some yards there. And he he's had a pretty good game against the Rams, even though they lost. And as a whole, they didn't play well. He put up numbers there. So it, it, it lined perfectly for him where he just needed to go in Foxborough. And even though he didn't have a great day, he didn't need many yards to be able to break the record. Yeah. Um, you know, congratulations again, because that is nothing short of amazing, um, putting up those type of numbers. Like you said, this – and wait, well, I ain't but two <laughs> that it, in in this in the history of the NFL that put up those kind of of passing yards. So, congrats to Tom Brady. Um, they did, however, struggle a lot in this game, and I was actually surprised because I thought that Tampa would dog walk New England in this in this game, and that did not happen. Honestly, you know, Tampa should have lost this game. You know, um, I, and listen, I know Tom Brady is great at. Give him 30 seconds. He's one of those guys. We spoke about it last week. He's one of those guys that can get you down the field. You can give him 20 seconds at a timeout. He's going to get you down the field. Um, but just just going by the trajectory of the game, you know, Tom Brady struggled all, all game pretty much. The rain, I know, played a, a, a huge factor in that as well. But the, the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers were not supposed to win this game. This was a game that realistically should have gone, um, you know, to, to, to the Patriots. Um, and I will say this because I know, you know, people, you know, they. I think I think Belichick made the, the 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 right call going for the field goal just because if he doesn't go for the field goal in that situation and they don't convert on fourth down, everybody's going to be getting that Bill Belichick. Oh, well, you should just kick the field goal. Blah, 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 blah. So, you know, it was kind of his hands was tied. Uh, you know, Nick Folk, you know, obviously he's, he's not he's not a uh, Gotskowski. He's not um Vinatieri. He's not he's not one of those legendary Patriots kickers of the past. And he was a little bit banged up. It didn't happen and you know ultimately they weren't able to get the lead. Um but you know what? Good things for the Patriots. I thought I thought Mac Jones uh you know he played really well in in that moment because this was such a big pressure moment for him. Playing against the guy that you're pretty much you know, replacing, you're going to be that franchise quarterback for a long time to come now in this type of a game, in a game where he was going to break the passing yards record. There was just so much emotion, so much energy, just with the history and everything going on. And I thought Mac Jones did really well, you know, outside of getting the win, but, you know, you, you can't always get him. Yeah, I mean, it, it, starting with Mac Jones, as you mentioned, um, he is the heir apparent to Tom Brady. Uh, obviously, when you're drafted 15th overall, you're expected to come in and be the face of the franchise for the next 10, 12, 15 years. So he is that. And I thought he handled that pressure very well um, because you're staring down the barrel. You're looking across the sideline and you're seeing a legend in the flesh. 
you know, who's who's on his back on his field. But in terms of the Bucs struggling, I'm actually not too surprised. I talked about it on the last episode of the Sanchez show where I thought there was a lot of emotion already built up into this game. I didn't think that it was ironic that we started hearing some of the chatter from Tom Brady's camp. You know, we heard his dad, we heard his trainer talk about the departure from New England. And I knew that would play a factor because when you start to hear people close to the player talk, that already lets you know how emotional this game is going to be. Because those people who love Tom Brady, they felt like they needed to stand up and go to bat for him. So I knew it was going to be a high emotional game. I expect the Bill to try to come up with some type of game plan to slow them down. On paper, Tampa Bay is the more talented team. But when you throw in the human element of the emotions and then Tom didn't have his, his safety net, he didn't have Gronkowski yesterday. You know what I'm saying? Um, Antonio Brown played well, but the weather also wreaked havoc on some of their game plan as well. As you saw some of those passes from Brady, he wasn't as accurate because they played in the rain. And I think the rain played into the kick. Um, you're right. I don't know what Bill could have done there because if you don't kick the field goal, if you go for it on fourth down, then you leave that what if like, damn, I wish we would at least attempted a kick to see if we could have taken the lead. Um, But I also think that where Bill messed up, I thought, was he had a timeout in his pocket. Call a timeout, really figure out, do we have a fourth down play that can get us the first? If not, we're going to kick the field goal. But to me, even if they make the field goal, it goes back to, to your statement. Then you're giving Brady the ball back with 50 seconds and two timeouts. So, If you're Belichick, you're basically in limbo because it's like if we don't kick this, but we don't convert the fourth, then we never got the opportunity to take the lead. If we do kick it and he makes it in in really tough conditions because it was raining pretty hard and it's a 56 yard field goal, it's not a chippy. Then we're still giving Brady 50 seconds with two timeouts and all he's got to do is get in field goal range. So it was a lose lose situation. I think they could have managed the clock a little bit better there. But more importantly, they had opportunities. Um, in the red zone after Jacoby Myers makes that great play on a on a receiver pass, they don't score a touchdown. They have to settle for a field goal there. Um, their defense played lights out. They left some opportunities, but ultimately you walk away from it. If you're the Patriots and you got to feel like, hey, we're close because you know what? They didn't run the ball early in the fourth quarter. They had negative one yard rushing. It was all Mac Jones really the whole day as far as offense. Yeah. You had an opportunity to beat the champs. You came very close, and if you're the Patriots. That you walk away from it knowing we're getting better, we're moving in the right direction. But for the Bucks, you're absolutely right. You got to be a little concerned because that defense is really banged up now. They're missing three of their starting cornerbacks that are all out. Richard Sherman literally was signed off the street on Thursday, yeah. and he had to play meaningful snaps yesterday because they had no other cornerback. And then they lose Winfield uh, Jr. yesterday as well. They're in a bad place defensively. JPP is still out. They have to figure some things out. Uh, I think the middle part of the season is going to get a little rocky for them. Not because they're not good, just because of the injuries. Because also, Gronk looks like he's going to be out for about four weeks. Yeah. Uh, I mean, honestly, signing Richard Sherman was the best thing that, that they could have done. Because, like you said, they needed that secondary. They started off the season struggling anyway. But they're so depleted right now that when you got Richard Sherman, who literally just walked in the locker room, is playing damn near every minute down the field late in the game because there's just no one else that you can throw out there. So that was probably the smartest thing that they could have done. I don't know why the Chiefs didn't try to bring in Richard Sherman, you know, because they need help as, as well. Um, but they but they got to they do better because they're not going to repeat uh, as, as, as NFL champions without that defense stepping up because it was – they they did what they were able to do in the Super Bowl because of that defense and how they were able to chase down Patrick Mahomes, had him frustrated doing just uh, playing unlike Patrick Mahomes that we're, we've come to know and love. So if they don't get that defense right, you know, even with them having so many weapons on the offensive end, I'm sure Gronk will be back come playoff time. But they have to they have to figure out what's going on with that defense uh, because they they can find themselves going home early in the playoffs if they don't. Absolutely. Uh, yesterday might have been their best performance in terms of points allowed because Dallas, Atlanta, and the Rams all moved the ball up and down and scored a bunch of points on them. The Patriots moved the ball up and down. They just couldn't finish drives. So from that standpoint, you take that as a victory. Uh, but they have a lot of work to do defensively. Todd Bowles is going to have his hands full with all the injuries on the defensive side. And to your point, I think – Sherman to Tampa Bay just made more sense schematically. Uh, Bowles likes to play more zone, which is a strength of, of Sherman. Spagnolo in Kansas City, they want to try to attack you and blitz you, and they lead their corners a lot one-on-one with a single high safety. 
And I don't think that was ever a strong suit of Richard Sherman's, especially not now as he's already into his 30s. Yeah, yeah. And uh, let me just say this going because the difference, though, with the Patriots, they don't have those playmakers that Dallas and even Atlanta has out there as, as right. and the Rams. So, you know, they did they did do a, a good job. But, you know, at the same time, it's like, all right, well, this the best receiver is Nelson Aguilar. Is it? I don't know if it's, yeah. is he even their best it's, receiver. It's, I mean, Jacoby Myers may be the most reliable receiver, but I I highly doubt anybody's double covering Jacoby Myers. No, that like he's not commanding. On yeah, team. he's. I think the biggest disappointment for them is that Hunter Henry and John Smith haven't developed into the combination they thought when yeah. they first signed those guys. You and I both thought, "Wow, this is like them trying to recreate Gronk and Aaron Hernandez." Yes, and it hasn't really materialized. I think Hunter Henry maybe had two catches yesterday. Um, but they got to get that running game going, man. It's it's too much pressure. They flashed a stat where Mac Jones had completed like 19 straight passes at one point. And I think overall he set the record for rookie completions in a game. Yeah. But that's not what we expected from Mac Jones. Not right away anyway. He's not supposed to be throwing the ball 30 plus times. Not it's supposed all. to be a balanced offense that allows him to pick his spots and get some play action going. Not we're dropping back and three out of every four plays we're throwing the ball. I think that's too high of a percentage right now. And I, I mean, you know what it is? The problem is there's no running game. And you, they traded away uh, uh, Sonny Michelle. And then now, you know, James White gets hurt last week. So they, they have no depth at running back either. And this ain't the Baltimore Ravens where I guess you can just plug in anybody off the street. Well, and they still right, right. <laughs> like, you know, this is Teresa Weatherspoon, better known as Teaspoon. And you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. Live from the camp. Uh-huh. Real fans, real talk, we as real as you thought. Real 